Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Welcome to part three of Growing Trees on Mars. In part two of this series, I got all the ingredients together to make my very own replica Martian soil. It's the evening now, and when I started this day in the morning, making my own Martian soil seemed like a bit of a far off dream. But today, I took it a step closer to reality. The process of making my Martian soil didn't start off so well this morning, so I'll take you back in time and we'll go through my day here in the bonsai zone. My electrolysis creating my iron oxide didn't go very well yesterday. I had that little battery charger hooked up and I got a few bubbles off the one nail and it kind of discolored the water around the nail, but it didn't do very much. So I thought I'd try our older battery charger. It doesn't have electronic controls on it or anything. And I tried it and I plugged it in for like 20 seconds and it started changing the water to an iron oxide color almost right away. And the bubbles were just coming off the one nail, almost like an aquarium bubbler. It was just quite a dramatic result. So I'll show you that and then I'll put it back outside to complete the reaction. I'll plug the old battery charger in now and show you the reaction. So here I go. There's a close up of the gases coming off the anode. You can see it's quite a dramatic reaction. The water is still a nice cool temperature, but I'll keep my eyes on that. The gas coming off is a mixture of chlorine and hydrogen gas. You can see the water is going a nice red oxide color. So that'll just keep getting darker as the process continues. It's been a few minutes now and you can see the mixture is starting to turn sort of a gray color now. It'll turn probably quite black by the time the nail is partially dissolved. Here's a good shot of all the bubbles coming to the surface. The process of making my iron oxide three is going really well. So I'll move the experiment outdoors. I'm outside now and I'll be dissolving my aluminum into my hydrochloric acid. So I'll pour my acid into these polypropylene containers. We'll just put a bit in the bottom of each one. About that much I'd say. And this one too. That's good. So that's how much I have in there. You don't want to be smelling this stuff. It's really wicked, the fumes. So this is just rainwater. I'm going to dilute it by about half. So, some water in there. Next, I'll crumple some aluminum foil up into a ball to reduce the surface area, just to see how it goes. Here goes the first test one. It's been about a minute and a half, no reaction yet. So I'll start one in the other container, crumple up a bigger ball of aluminum foil. I'll start that process going. I see no signs of a reaction at all. I'll try a little piece of tin foil in and see what that does. So I'll just put a single sheet in like that. And I'll put one in this one also. That one is starting to get some bubbling now. From the, uh, the balled up piece of tin foil. It's starting to bubble, I'll show you that. Sorry. Yeah, definitely a reaction starting there. This one, not much happening at all. Oh, this one's really going here. Standing back, turning quite black.
That is quite a reaction. So this reaction is almost stopped now. Still nothing in this vat over here. That's strange. I wonder if I have to stir it up or something. I'll give this a stir. Still no reaction from this one, but I'll add some more aluminum to this one. The one on the left. Get another crumpled up ball in there. There we go. There it goes right away. The tin foil on the right hand side is bubbling, but no extreme reaction. This one is obviously heated up. It's melted the snow around it here. Here goes another ball of foil on this one. I'm wondering if the uh, acid has to heat up to temperature before it starts reacting. I moved it further away from my trees. It probably wouldn't do them any good, all those fumes. So I added some more acid to the one that wasn't reacting. And I added a little bit of water to the one that was reacting well, just to kind of equalize them out. Both of the containers are dissolving the aluminum really well now. So I'm just making my balls a little tighter. So I'm squishing them more together and just keep adding balls of aluminum to it and watch them dissolve. So my reaction had stopped working. So I had to add more acid and water to the mix. Now it's back to doing really well, bubbling nicely. The uh, fumes that come off it are really noxious. They're, uh, yeah, they'll sting your eyes and your lungs. So I'm standing like really, really far back, like as far back as I can get. It doesn't smell good at all. I've noticed that the warmer the solution, the better the reaction you get. So here, I started a new pot and it's got the same solution as the others and it's hardly going at all because it's cold. The other pots, because they're warm, are bubbling away like crazy. So this one I like get too cold here. It got a little colder than this one and it's taking a while to react now until it builds up its temperature again. That one's going just beautifully. Be time to add some more foil to that soon. This one's just starting to bubble now. It'll take it a while. So yeah, you gotta keep the, uh, keep the mixture going. Um, Keep adding foil so it keeps it at a, a nice warm temperature. You don't want to let the solution cool down too much. I've been working away, reducing my aluminum down all afternoon, and the reaction is really slowed down. So I think it's time to pour the mixture, strain it through an old t-shirt into a container, and start a fresh batch of acid to dissolve more aluminum. I've got a container with an old rag on top that I can strain the mixture through. So here I go. Actually, I think I'll stir it up first. Then I can pour it in here. This will strain out all the contaminants, or at least a lot of them anyway. So I'll let that settle down. You can see it dripping through down here. The aluminum is dissolved in there. So the next thing I have to do is I have to add baking soda to uh, precipitate it out of the liquid. You can see my tinfoil balls that didn't dissolve in here. I've used a fair amount of aluminum already. I'd say probably half the roll already. So yeah, there's a fair amount of aluminum in here. I've almost completed filtering the first container. So there's the liquid I want to keep in the bottom there. I'll start pouring container number two now. I better give it a stir first. All right, we'll let that settle. Kind of stir the uh, mixture in here a bit to 
get it going through the filter. I've got my two containers drained now. I'll just let that filter through and I'll start draining my third one also. That's probably all I can make today. It'll get dark in about an hour, so I'll just finish this up, clean out my containers, and get ready for another batch tomorrow. It's dark out now. I put away all my supplies for making my aluminum oxide, stored them away for the night, and then I went to check on my iron oxide to see how it's going, and there was no reaction at all. Here's what the coffee pot looked like when I checked on it. It looks like the surface of Mars down here. The reaction had stopped working because my one nail has completely corroded away. The process of converting one nail to iron oxide only took about six hours. So I'll replace this nail now with a new one, sharp on the end. In goes the new nail. And we'll start the reaction. I'm going to make as much Martian soil as I can with the supplies that I have. If I can't make enough to fill this bottom tray, then I may have to put the trees in little pots inside the greenhouse. I've been thinking a lot about what kind of trees I want to plant in my Martian soil. And I think I want to pick a tree that's used to growing in really poor soil. So maybe some desert type trees or some of the trees from the rainforest are used to growing in very poor soil. All the nutrients wash away with the with the rain so i'll have to kind of uh see what trees i have and try and select the best ones that are suitable to grow in martian soil it's time now for today's update today's update is my ficus benjamina it's a fusion project in the last video on this tree i did a lot of severe pruning to get the height of the tree down and also to start reducing these tall vertical trunk lines to a more spreading branch type structure. My ficus seems to be growing really well under the new LED lights. The leaf color is really good. It's growing nice and dense on the top canopy. So I've got no complaints about my new lights. After the darkest days of winter are over and we start to get a little more sunshine in late January, February, I will do a little sorting out of the structure of the tree, getting rid of some of the crisscrossing branches just to clean it up a bit. It's time now for a viewer's picks. Gola from Bangalore, India has a green island ficus. Here's Jason's indoor setup. He's from Maine, USA. He's got a willow leaf ficus, Portula caryophra, and a ficus clump. Mark from Marburg, Germany has sent in pictures of his really nice begonia bonsai. Nick from England has sent in a picture of his new 3D printer and he's busy printing bonsai pots. Pablo has sent in a picture of his root over temple planting. Sachin from Mangalore, India has sent in a root over temple tree, but this time it's a full size tree. Soturus from Greece from the Corfu Island has sent in a picture of I think a ficus. That's all for today. I hope you join me for part four of growing trees on Mars. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for watching here in the Bonsai Zone.